Stephen Michaels. Then it will be car number 11, a driver from Woodbury, Connecticut, in the Hydar construction car, Travis Hydar. A salute to the veterans on America's birthday. The Dunleavy truck and trailer number 01 for former champion, Ludlow, Massachusetts, Johnny Walker. Then it will be car number 37, returning to the Speedway from Columbia in the foot group. Dr. Scotland sponsored car for David Maka Sr. Car number one is up next, Danny Susie. Live in the Country Connections renovation car from Ashford, Connecticut. Car number 53 will be next from Jewett City in the RAR chassis machine, Paul Borden Jr. Marvin Minkler, car number 26, will start scratch from Stanford, Connecticut. Samantha Anderson, mechanical problems, will not be able to start the event. And the thing about Marvin Minkler, he is a member of the military. So quite appropriately, on July 4th weekend, he is starting in this street stock race. So the field is under green as they rumble off turn number four. They swing and they sway like dance partners on a big band floor. But right now, it is car number 21 for Jason Lafayette that quickly moves into the number one spot. Keep your eyes on Bissette. Keep your eyes on Megan Fuller and Nicole Chambrello. Those two girls have mastered a way of coming to the front early in these feature events, Matt. We saw it happen a week ago, and Megan wants her turn setting atop the podium again. She is looking for her second win. Right behind her is Nicole Chambrello. On the inside is Suriello, but he can't keep up with Megan Fuller. Now attacking on the outside, Nicole Chambrello making a move on the inside of the 77 car. That is Tess Beyer in the Rick Sissler machine. So the ladies are moving to the front. But right now, Jason Lafayette is trying to hold off George Bissett Jr. for the lead. At the start of this season, I don't think anyone expected Lafayette to be as strong as he has been. But keep your eyes on a second-generation driver. They say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. But car number 39 is making its presence known for George Bissett Jr. The orange and white creamsicle car is all over the back bumper of our current leader as they continue to rumble into turn number two. Yeah, Meanwhile, the girls have got their own three-car battle going on that for that third spot. And Nicole Chambrello trying to take a peek inside of Megan Fuller. Didn't have enough energy to make it happen. And look at George Bissett Jr. I think that car should be sponsored by Good Humor. As the creamsicle trying to melt down that number 21 of Jason Lafayette. There's no question about it. There's good racing action. As now, Johnny Walker, whenever he comes back to Stafford, he comes with a mission. And we are seeing that mission exactly as we speak. Great racing action up front. And Walker now tries to get down under the test, but can't do it. But look at the Lasco number 39 car, the creamsicle car, all over. The back bumper of Jason Lafayette, who started this event in the number two position. And Jason Lafayette has knocked on the door all spring and all summer and has been unable to get that first win in a street stock. So here comes Bissette. He wanders to the outside, looking for some fight from the outside. We can't find it. Megan Fuller doing a great job holding off to Cole Chambrello. So Megan Fuller looking for a podium as she leads a fourth place car by about the length of a cue stick. Here comes Bissette to the outside, but the yellow comes out. So we are on hold. Now, if uh, you have lost your cell phone, a phone has been turned into the office. So if you're missing a phone and nobody can call you, you can go to the office to describe your phone and claim it. So if you are missing your cell phone, there is a good chance we might have it for you at the track office. Well, here they come, Matt, rumbling back to the stride. With this step on the wrist. Set. Yep. And he continues to hold off the opposition. Good battle between Megan Fuller and Chambrello. Chambrello's confidence has been up ever since that line where she rolled end over end. Oh, and now she goes down through the glass, loses several positions, comes back out in front of Brandon Michael. And then the seven, seven nails her back now. And the 29 is also when the race resumes. So we'll be without Nicole Chambrello and Chris Bagnell as a Nicole 
I learned a new word watching big time wrestling this week. She got tombstoned. Ooh, that is a new one, man. Here they go. And there is Bissette on the outside, but he won't get far. Nope. Everybody was just a little bit too rambunctious. Boss alarm. And that's going to tighten it all back up. Napa Auto Care Centers are conveniently located where you are. Remember, please check the complete list of Napa Auto Parts stores. For Napa know-how is more than a phrase, it's a way of life. The Napa Auto Parts stores of the night include the ones in Stratford, Connecticut, Ed and Chris Nelson store in Tallinn, Connecticut, the Vernon store, and in Wallingford, Connecticut. The best in service, price, knowledge, and they love the race fans, and they love the racers. Here we go. Walker carrying those veterans' photos on America's birthday. Plastered on the hood with those special memories and thoughts. Is running high, wide, and handsome to the outside with a bid for the runner-up spot. But we have some great battles. One is between Lafayette and Johnny Walker. Another one right behind him between Megan Fuller and Brandon Michael. As Michael tickling the back bumper of Megan Fuller cannot get by. Travis Hydar moving up. Susie, who was involved in that altercation, he is running in six. And now Walker making a move down low underneath Lafayette. Walker moves to the inside. They say that do good things for others. It'll come back to you twofold. And that is the story. They did a special show to salute the veterans on America's birthday. Put pictures of the veterans who had passed. Oh, all of a sudden, Megan Fuller's car is slightly off the pace. And that works to the advantage of Brandon Michaels with car number 74. Down the back straightaway, the 37 is down mowing the lawn, Matt. And that, of course, is David Maka Sr. Now, whoever wins that battle between Michael and Megan Fuller will become the point leader because they started the night tied. Michael with the advantage because of better finishes. But right now, if Michael can stay in fourth place, one notch ahead of Megan Fuller, he will take over sole control of the point lead. Well, half of the event is all but history, and they sometimes save the best for round number two in the second half of the event. Meanwhile, the number 11 car of Travis Hydar is right there with uh, the, the challenger, and that, of course, is Megan Fuller. The 53 of Paul Borden Jr., slightly off the pace, down through the center of the infield, but okay, and we are still under green. But there's no question about it. He might be a youngster, but he's a chip off the old block, and that is the driver of the number 39 for George Bissett Jr. The creamsicle machine is looking racy at the point, Walker is trying to reel him in, Matt, but the times are about the same between first and second. Gordon now pulls to the center of the infield. He's out of the competition, but look a little further back. We've got three cars contending again. Tess Beyer, Megan Fuller, and Travis Hyda. And Megan Fuller, she is almost wallpaper to the side of that Travis Hydar car. Up at the front, George Bissett. Walker knows he has plenty of time. This year, street stock races are 20 laps of duration, so that gives Walker some time to operate as he continues to narrow the gap that separates him from George Bissett. It's good racing straight back through in this one. Meanwhile, side-by-side -side racing Megan Fuller and Travis Hydar. Megan's car seems to have developed some type of a problem with less than five circuits for remaining. A high five comes out from Byron Callum on the starter stand with five circuits to go. Brandon Michael is closing up the gap, and all of a sudden the Lafayette machine is getting looser and looser as he continues to fight that race car because he wants a good podium finish here in tonight's program for the street stocks. But the plot thickens at the front as George Bissett, the lead, is disappearing. Johnny Walker, he knows he only has to lead one lap. And right now, he has less than four to make it happen. Lafayette, you can see, he is fighting a very stubborn car. It wants to do one thing, and Lafayette wants it to do another. Go straight and go into the turns hard. Walker is closing up the gap, and Bissette's machine on the last circuit by was literally sideways in turn number four. Johnny Walker, the champion, the veteran, Salute car is running and closing up the gap ever so slightly. 
He narrows it down. Two car lengths on the last circuit. Here was where Bissette had the problem. This time he comes through with ease. Popsicle sticks are up. One mile left. Matt, does Walker have anything for Bissette? Or will it end the way that we see it? Well, Walker seems to have some energy, but Bissette driving a flawless race, hitting his marks. Here he comes out of turn number three. Walker running out of time. White flag lap, and it's a one-lap showdown between George Bissett Jr. and Johnny Walker. Walker continues to reel him in, but Bissett holds on as they head down the back straightaway. Final time down the long back straightaway here at Stafford. Bissett is there. Walker reels him in. Less than a car lane. They come off turn number four. Walker's getting closer. Bissett holds on. Ladies and gentlemen, George Bissett Jr. has done it again. Johnny Walker to finish in second. Lafayette for third. Brandon Michael to finish in the fourth spot. Test Here is George Bissett as we go to Napa Victory Lane and send it to John Gates. Go ahead, John. Okay, coming down on the ground and coming down hard here in the feature event with another win. Win number two this year for George Bissett Jr. George, man, you had that car uh, rocking and rolling tonight. Yeah, we had a, you know... We had a great car, you know, bat a little bit tight in the heat race, made some good adjustments. Can't thank all my outstanding crew enough. You know, they, they we put at countless hours in this. I got six hours worth of the wrap job I did, and I'm so glad I'm tearing it off. But uh, I can't thank all my all the guys enough. I just it's unbelievable we're here again. Uh, Many coming from war, and uh, I just can't thank all my sponsors, you know, like all the contingencies at Stafford and stuff like that. They do a lot for this track, and I appreciate that stuff. So I want to thank, like, Alaska Roofing and Sheet Metal, um, Associated Light Near Eyes, because we don't have their sticker on it, unfortunately. Um, LaJoy's Auto Wrecking, Bagel Man, uh, Vine Line, Good Old Mechanical. Well, uh, there's so many. Northeast Carpet, F&M Electric Supply. Oh, I just can't thank these guys enough. Well, you had some good battles out there. Johnny was coming out strong uh, there towards the end. Were you getting a little nervous? Eh, kind of not really, but I was just making sure I didn't send it in there too hard, you know, get loose and have him get underneath me. But, you know, Johnny's a really good racer. It's cool to see him back and, you know, finally beat him like this. So, it's awesome. All right, there he is, George Bissett Jr. He goes into victory lane here in our street stock main event. What a run for the Lasco number 39 machine. Let's talk to our second place finisher in his wicker, Johnny Walker. Johnny, man, good run. Good to see you back here at Stafford Motor Speedway. And uh, you got to be happy to be back. Second place, not quite what you wanted, but uh, not a bad run. You were coming out strong. Yeah, but having to take a couple weeks off to get our engine put back together, kind of put us behind the eight ball. We had to start uh, back in Rhode Island somewhere, but uh, we were able to get up, you know, to uh, the second, you know, and I was trying to wheel uh, George in. Maybe another five laps, I might have had something for him, but he's great, and uh, glad to see him, you know, come home first. I got to thank my sponsors, Don't Live Your Truck and Trailer Repair, uh, Marquise Landscaping, Rat Auto Machine for putting my engine back together. Uh, let's see, Williams Race Gear, Brardy Transmissions, uh, my crew, my mom, Rob Melendi for Piner Valley Wheel Repair, Jeff Ramsey Carpentry, uh, let's see, Napa, Stafford Speedway, my turn four crew, uh, everyone who's helped me, get, you know, uh, we were running this hood in honor of uh, all the fallen soldiers. If you look on the hood, we have a uh, uh, portraits of all the, about six or seven fallen soldiers, so uh, it's glad, it's, it's, I'm happy to be able to put that thing up here in Victory Lane. And what happened is, have you back here in Victory Lane, Johnny, another good run. All right, yeah, uh, I don't know when we'll be back, money's kind of tight, if we could uh, land a spot a year we get back here a little bit more that'd be awesome but uh right now we're looking forward to like maybe come back in september all right give it up for wicker johnny walker second place here tonight in zero one let's talk to our third place finisher jason lafayette good to have you back here in napa victory lane and uh jason man the 21 is getting quicker and quicker i i can't wait to see that thing in victory lane yeah thank you i mean my crew worked so hard on it you know the the lavoys um you know they help out g mclean um you know, I, I don't know. I just can't think of who, who else helps out right now. Sorry. But, yeah, great run. The car, we just keep getting stronger and stronger every week. And uh, you'd be amazed at what little nitpicky stuff makes these things faster. Look for this guy in victory lane real soon. Jason Lafayette, he drives that blue number 21 machine here in the street stock division. Let's go back up to the tower. Well, thank you very much, John.